to be surprised to know is that over 40% of them wish to farm. Uh, I, that surprised me when I first heard about this, but when I discovered that 60% of that body comes from a rural environment, many of them farms, and you get, begin to understand why it is that they want to get into farming. Um, a high percentage of them have, uh, have a disability. Depending on which day you ask the Veterans Administration, anywhere from 30 to 40% have some sort of disability. They bring back both visible and invisible wounds more invisible wounds than visible. And so, and so uh, that's something we need to contend with as we move forward. At the same time, 63% of the farms in this country are in the last, last generation. All types, all sizes, no matter what it is, 63%. The average age of a farmer is approaching 60, and in some places, some areas in Kansas, it's over 70. Um, the siblings just don't want to come back and take the farm over, like my brother and I, I guess. They just don't want to go back to farming. And so, and so here we have an opportunity. We have all of these young men and women out there that want to farm, and we have a need for them. So how do we get them there? So how do you get them there? Um, there, just isn't a, there just isn't a way for them to go to learn to farm. You can't go to K-State or Land-Grant University and to get a degree in farming or learn farming. It's all higher technical kinds of courses and still piped into, into various technical uh, uh, agribusiness uh, jobs, but not farming. There are a few um, uh, colleges, small colleges and vocational colleges that have, that have uh, farming programs, but they're fairly limited. So how do we take these young men and women now that want to get in farming and get them there in a relatively short period of time? because they're more mature than high school students. So uh, my daughter is a clinical psychologist and she works for an organization called the Kansas Prairie Medical Center. She sees eight or 10, sometimes 10, usually six to eight patients a day. She specializes in post-traumatic stress, brain injury, and suicide. And so uh, six years ago, she was uh, training some soldiers or uh, giving therapy to some soldiers at Fort Riley in a greenhouse, and she noticed that that was very effective as far as therapy is concerned. And th those that were working with soil, working with plants, she saw something change in them. So she suggested to me that we open a farm for veterans and transitioning military. And I said, okay, we'll do some due diligence here and check it out. Her idea was to have a small farm near Manhattan with six or eight of those with post-traumatic stress or a brain injury that we could help recover.